Hello and welcome to Charters Talk 4630. I'm Stacy, and joining me today is my partner, Kyle D. And we thank you for joining us today. If this is your first time here, I'm happy you joined us. And I'll be even happier if you decide to join our community. Thank you to everyone that subscribed and continue to help us grow. And this way you'll be notified whenever we go live or release the latest content. You can also hear us wherever you get your podcasts. And last, please go to your browser and check out more Chargers content from some great writers along with myself on stormcloud.blog. Good morning, Kyle. How's it going? I'm doing good, Stacy. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. It's six o'clock in the morning where you are, man. That's really early. <laughs> I mean, let me just say this, man. I, I want to thank you again for your like your dedication and your commitment to doing this podcast with me, man. Cause like when you get up, do you jump up and just get your stuff together and get ready to go? Or do you cook breakfast or no, so some mornings it depends. You and I were recording for a little bit at eight your time, five my time. On mm -hmm. those days, I would get mm -hmm. up at four thirty and be ready to go by by uh five uh on these six thirty day six o'clock days sometimes i'll get up at five and get a little okay. something, something a little snack uh or okay. smoothie uh but no most of the time it's just coffee and we'll, well take I mean, care of the rest later but i appreciate you having me on stacy i if it wasn't at this time like i told you at seven o'clock i'm i'm on baby duty so uh this works out best for both of us again i appreciate you man and Maybe you don't cook when you get up in the morning, but I know somebody that was cooking on Sunday at SoFi Stadium, and we've got some highlights I put together. Let's say you want to go check them out? Let's do it. Let's, Let's do check it. it. Herbert back to pass. He fakes the run to Dobbins, and there's nobody open, and Herbert takes off, and he's got a lot of room. Picks up the first down, split defenders, and still going. He gives Matt Dow a shoulder as Matt Dow knocks him out of bounds. There's the dual threat we hadn't seen this year, probably because of blow and leg injuries. But he's looked as healthy as we've seen him since week one. Cameron Dicker, who was 5-5 five of five in that loss to Arizona. And here's the kick from 46, and it's good. Cameron Dicker rarely misses. That's now 57 straight field goals when he's under 50 yards. Dobbins in the backfield. And here you see lead blockers Scott Matlock and Zion Johnson lead the way, and that's an easy touchdown, as you'll see, by J.K. Dobbins. Rattler trying to climb the pocket, but Thule gets the stop. Here's a fake to Dobbins. Justin has time here and throws a laser down the right side of the field, and Palmer makes a good catch. Durbin James brings the heat from the edge. Rattler steps up in the pocket and right into the waiting arms of versatile player Scott Matlock. And he quickly lets the crowd know by pointing to the name on the back of his jersey. Yes, it's me, the same guy that's the leading blocker on offense too. The Saints defense has been looking a lot better in this game than they looked against the Broncos. But here, Herbert throws a pass down the sideline and wow, what a catch by McConkie. The defender misjudged the ball while it was in the air and the catch is made. And it's McConkie weaving through traffic like he's Keenan Allen with a Fred Astaire move. Touchdown Chargers. Here's the handoff to Dobbins and he gets stuffed up the middle for a loss. No, he spins out and he's still on his feet. Dobbins bouncing off players like a pinball gives a Derrick Henry stiff arm in the process. He picks up the first down and goes out of bounds. Justin Herbert back. The pocket is collapsing. Herbert puts it up downfield and it's Joshua Palmer with the catch. Shoved out of bounds at the 12-yard line. The Saints rookie corner is getting picked on by Herbert today. Their last couple of games, you can tell Justin Herbert is starting to get comfortable in this offense. And look at this dime he dropped to Jalen Rigo. Wow, it was a great throw, but an even better catch. Jalen Rigo with the toe tap out of bounds. Herbert back to pass, the left side pocket collapsing. Herbert escapes out the back door, running to his left, throws on the run, and he hits, guess who? Vlad McConkey in the corner for his second touchdown on the day. Herbert is feeling himself this week against this Saints team. Chargers get the pressure and a big sack by Puna Ford, who's paying big dividends since his signing. I can't say enough of how well this defense has been playing since week one. This defense is pinning their ears back and really getting after it now as the offensive line of the Saints are becoming overwhelmed by this Chargers defense. Kyle, there was times in particular the first half of this game where it looked ugly, but as the game went on, it looks like this offense has figured out some things, and Justin Herbert is playing at the level we're accustomed to seeing, and I believe he's healthy for the first time since the opening week. He even broke off a few big runs, and with this defense, 
maybe, just maybe, this could be the turning point where the Chargers pivot towards making a run at a wild card. What you think? Yeah, I mean, when he took off on that scramble, Stacey, I was texting my guys in my group chat like, that's his follow me moment, guys. He's like, yes. you guys get on my F and back and follow me. Like, yes. we, we're doing this. And and you felt it. You felt It was an angry run by him. It was a, like, I'm attaching a trailer to me and I'm pulling us all through. And and he did, man. After that, it seemed like everyone played with a little more intensity. Uh, normally, you, you see that with the running game. We talk about the running game being what normally breaks down a team. Stick with it, trust it, and you're going to start breaking off the runs. And we weren't mm -hmm. getting those big gains early in the passing game. And then all of a sudden, uh, it just it started clicking and things started happening. You hear uh, Harbaugh call it the bucket or the uh, the, the jar of olives. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about olives, be a jar of olives being like touchdowns because we've been without them for a while and they're yeah. packed in there so tight. You're so stuck together that, you know, you flip over the jar and they don't fall out, but then you get that one. Yeah, and maybe yeah. maybe let them all start falling out, and hey, that's kind of what happened. And yeah, yeah, and I was I was fired up. It was a great game. Uh, Herbert was like you said, looks like he's healthy. He's dealing again, which yes. is great. Yes, yes. You know, um, speak a little bit about some of these guys. I just wrote some of these names down because we often talk about J.K. Dobbins. We talk about you know Justin Herbert and the people that. It's mentioned all the time when you speak about this team, but there's a lot of people that has contributed to um, the success that this team has had, in particular on the defensive side, uh, like Puna Ford, Tia Tart, uh, Tito Agbanaya, Elijah Molden, Christian Fulton, Cam Hart, and Tarheeb Steele. I mean, we were kind of worried a little bit when you when Asante Samuel went down. But man, Cam Hart, man, looked like he might be Asante might have a problem getting back in the lineup if this guy keep playing the way he's playing. Absolutely. Absolutely. When I, I, I watch Notre Dame games, it's the one team that I tune into with my, with mm -hmm. my wife. She went to Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. So last year when I saw him play, he stood mm -hmm. out on film again and again to me, uh, or just even during the broadcast, big bodied cornerback that never felt like he was overmatched and played with a lot of physicality. Right. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. When I when we were preparing for the draft, my thought on heart was that he was probably somebody that could step in and start. Like he didn't yes. make many mistakes in college and he played like he played smart. He looked like a guy that was pro ready, but mm -hmm. might not have that pro bowl or all pro ceiling. Somebody that yeah. you could plug in and rely on to start, but he might not be one of the top cornerbacks in the league throughout his career. Um, cause he doesn't, didn't quite have that twitchy, um, high speed, high acceleration skill set. Yeah. That's still kind of how I feel about him. I feel like he's, he's a solid starter, even as a rookie that right. plays with physicality. And that's what we need in this Harbaugh defense. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd let somebody like, like my, uh, our buddy, Ryan Watkins, give a real scouting report on whether he thinks he can take his game to another level with, with the tools that he does have. Right. But, um, but yeah, that's why I was really fired up when we got him in the fifth round. I was a little bummed when we drafted still yeah, uh, because just because I didn't know Tarheeb, I think he's won me over since then. But the yeah. only reason I was bummed was because I wanted heart. And then when right. we got hard, a couple players let plays uh, yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. picks later. I was like, "Yeah, man, are yeah. you serious?" Yeah, and they both look good, man. Yeah, they, yeah, they both look like they could have a good future uh, with this team and the NFL. I'm gonna tell you, man. Um, you know, I went back and forth. You know, like you know, we all was super excited when Harbaugh came here and the coaching staff he put together, and you started off drafting all and everything, and um, and we were super excited, but we also constantly said. We don't know what it's going to look like because we know how dynamic Justin Herbert is, right? We just mm -hmm. seen this guy throw 4,800 yards every year on the average. In one year, the only one that threw more yards than him was Tom Brady when they went to the Super Bowl, but he threw over 5,000 yards that year. So we like, wow, we really got a stud. But then when you bring in Greg Roman and mm -hmm. you guys that you want to control the time possession you want to win the trenches you want to run the ball you want to have methodical drives we were saying how is that going to look matched with Justin Herbert because you don't want to put handcuffs on him but mm -hmm. at the same time you know that it is true you do need to run the ball you know and play defense to win 
And so we didn't had some games, man, where we were loving it, especially after the first two. But then Justin combined with the new offensive schemes they have with Greg Roman, then the injuries happened. So it was kind of looking ugly. And we were like, you know, maybe this wasn't a good fit. Mm -hmm. But now that he's looking more healthier, you seen that run that he broke off. I'm like, plant office, besides whatever way you say the name, it don't look like he suffered from that anymore. And that now adds another dimension to what other teams got to prepare for that because mm -hmm. he's a dual threat now. So now I, I'm going back and forth, but now it looks like it's starting to come together because he's a lot healthier now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, there's a part of me that wants to say, that the offensive line has been struggling enough the last couple of weeks to mm -hmm. force us to pull off of that run first offensive scheme. Mm -hmm. But, but in actuality, Stacy, you know, the Cardinals just were selling out to stop the run and I haven't had a chance to review the saints footage yet, but you know, the, the Cardinals at times had nine guys in the box. <laughs> like The last two were kind of just on the outside of it, but they were playing really tight in and, yeah they were challenging the passing offense to make that, make them pay for it. And yeah, we just yeah, yeah. We couldn't do it. But yeah. this week we saw us turn that corner and it might not mean that the running off that we're shifting away from being that run first team, but we're at least finding the balance that we need to succeed. Because right. if we can't, pass the ball if we can't move the ball through the air because our receivers aren't dynamic enough or whatever the storyline is teams are going to have an easier time shutting down this team we need to have the kind of games we had yesterday when teams sell out to stop the run or just even favoring the run because you know our offensive line does need a little bit of work in the interior but sure we showed that we can make teams pay for it yesterday yeah. Uh, that Saints defense isn't is in a slouch, even though they're struggling. They're struggling mostly because they they have poor quarterback play. Um, yeah. It's not because their defense stinks. And yeah. the offense did great, man. Um, yeah. Talking about some of those guys, Stacey, I know you like those big guys in the middle of our line. So tell us, yeah. tell me a little bit what you think about Tart and Ford and how they're performing. Well, I love them, man, because. You know, we were dealing with Sebastian Joseph Day and a couple other guys that we got from the Giants, and they just wasn't big enough, right? You know, we was mm -hmm. getting pushed. The middle was getting pushed through all the time. We hardly got any kind of penetration. The only penetration we were getting over the years under Staley was coming off the edges from Bosa and uh, from Khalil Mack. But teams just, we had to be, I think, like dead last the last couple of years with uh, our run defense. Teams yeah. just ran the ball up the middle on us at will. And so you need some big guys with some beef on them up front. And Tia Tart is a big boy. And even Tito Abanaya, he's a big boy. Puna Ford. These guys are not easy to push around. On top of that, they needed to have some type of athleticism. And Puna Ford has shown that he's batting passes down. He's getting picks. He even tried to run one for the touchdown. He got stripped. But these guys are good big men that we got in the middle. And I, I think that's made a hell of a difference with this defense now because now it's hard for teams to run the ball on us. But getting back to something that you were saying earlier, you were right. This was one of the reasons why we were starting to get a little disappointed because teams, because of the struggles with Herbert's injuries he had earlier on, and the receivers just wasn't stepping up. We can say that because they wasn't. Teams were game planning for J.K. Dobbins because they mm -hmm. seen that this guy healthy, and we know that he a difference maker on the ground. So now he's seeing nine men fronts all the time. And, and it was weird to see them actually challenging Justin Herbert of all people. We dare you to try to beat us. Mm -hmm. We're going to stop this run here, but we don't believe you have anybody on the outsides that can beat us. There's no threat. That's what got the conversations going that we need to add another playmaker. We need another playmaker receiver. And we'll get to that a little bit later. But uh, Justin proved Sunday, even without no big names, even with little Lab McConkey, you yeah. know, uh, uh, he's he still – um, we've seen Rivers do it over the years. We had times where he had nobody when when mm -hmm. when Gates was gone for the year and 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 Malcolm Floyd was gone and Vincent and you throw anybody back there and Philip made it work and Justin showed that he can do that same thing on Sunday. And we and you know Lad deserves some flowers too because yes those passes were to Lad were exceptional. 
Yes. But they were also into coverage. And yeah, Lad, yeah. Lad, Lad was like, I don't care, man. I'll, I'll look. Stacy likes to say that I got feet like Keenan Allen, but watch me have some ball, uh, some contested catch skill like Mike Williams. I'll bring you both, yeah. baby. That's what That's I'm right. here for. Like, he's, That's right. That was he's some a little guy, but he played man. big. Yeah. You know? And Matt Money was talking about it. He's like, I, it's he has an ability to track the football that is really impressive. Like it's yes. not easy looking around those arms and bodies to track that thing down. And he was, and he was coming down with the ball. And um, he's he's really showing that you know he might not be that Mike Williams type, but or that X receiver type. But he's showing that he has that capability of being Herbert's number one target, and yes. that's wonderful. That's great. Well, uh, another topic of conversation was going on at um, the defensive tackle, uh, Nathan Shepard, when he tackled Justin mm -hmm. Herbert. And I, I want to show you, um, play a little bit of that, what happened. You're trying to get me and angry he, on a Tuesday morning. Uh, yeah, I was too. When you see him, and he went to the extra twisting, man, mm -hmm. is what I didn't like. But, man, did I love Brad Boseman, man. I loved his reaction. And we've been giving him a lot of heat because he hasn't been playing that well from center. But when he saw this, and look at the extra twist. Look oh, yeah. And, and I mean, That's Brad BS. jumped in. Listen, yes, it, it was. I that right there, Stacy. I used to wrestle. That's called checking for oil, what he's doing right there. Yes, yes. <laughs> trying to get him <laughs> off him. It's the only way he had a chance to try to get him off him. So he tried to check his oil and get him yeah. out of there. And it didn't yes. work. Yes. Now, now the thing that made me hot about the whole thing, because uh, the Saints coach, uh, Dennis Allen, yeah. he said, um, my guy was trying to wrap the quarterback up. He's on the ground. He has no idea whether the quarterback has the ball or not. He's just trying to bring the quarterback down to the ground. There was nothing malicious about the play. And I thought that was total BS, man. I mean, I guess you got to say what you got to say, I guess, to try to protect your player. But everybody knows that that was dirty play. You know what I mean? And this he guy. Was turning his, he was turning yes. his leg like it was a tire iron, man. Like Yes. And you admitted <laughs> that, you had, that he had Justin on the ground. So it doesn't matter whether he got the ball or not. What are you doing? All that extra stuff after he's on the ground. Yeah. You know. I, that. That had me so heated, Stacy. And yeah, man, like I actually wrote an article about it on Stormcloud. So go okay. check it out, stormcloud.blog. Um, that's not a wrap up. Who calls that's, that a not wrap a football up? Move. The way yes. the coach did. You know, that's I, I saw that too, Stacy. I was like, that's not wrapping him up. Right. If he would have driven for his other leg and tried to wrap up both legs, that'd be yes. one thing. But he tried to, like I said, turn his leg over like it was a tire iron. Like that's not. That's yeah. not okay. The league needs to make an example of that if yes. they are serious about taking care of their players. Yes. I don't know what was in his head when uh, a quarterback or a, a particular uh, player who's impactful on his team is important to his team. When they have an injury and the opposing team knows it, and they, they will go after it. And mm -hmm. Justin had a high ankle sprain. And I think he was trying to re-injure him there. And other than that, then what other excuse can you use for having him on the ground? He's he's flattened out on his stomach on the ground and you grab his his ankle and you're doing all this extra stuff with the twisting. What were your intentions? What were you doing? So I was really upset about uh, and I'm, I'm going to play this. This shows the difference. And I'm going to give some flowers to everybody. No, I can't stand Ooh, the Raiders. Yeah, but I'm going to give some flowers. I'm going to show you reason why earlier week one when the Raiders and Chargers played toward the end of the game this is what happened and you you can see you know tempers flare and it always do when it comes to um the Raiders and Chargers and I didn't even like the Max Crosby I thought he should have been uh fined a lot more than what he I don't remember if he even got fined but he grabbed Quentin Johnston by his braids and threw him to the ground from behind and I'm saying now, here's where I give some flowers to Antonio Pierce. After that was over, here's what he said about that at the press conference. We got to do a better job of composure, starting with myself and the coaching staff. I mean, what happened at the end of the game is unexcusable. Uh, it's not going to be tolerated. He said it's unexcusable and it's not going to be tolerated. And, and Dennis, the coach for the Saints, he goes there and defend his guy when you clearly could have just said that was – 
we don't teach that. That wasn't a football move, and I'm sure he regretted, and I regret it, and we'll make sure something like that don't happen again. So I, I lost a lot of respect for um for Dennis Allen after that. I think the difference there might be, Stacy, that Dennis is probably feeling desperate right now. I think his head's on the guillotine. Uh, yeah. that, that Saints organization is probably probably about to go through a whole clean out. Uh, yeah. In 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 a couple weeks in the off season, who knows when it is? But everybody that is uh, that that's on the staff in 2025 uh, should be really grateful because I think yeah. it's going to start with the general manager and all the way down. That that thing needs a whole reset. There yeah. is no other way about it. Yes. Well, um, salute to Antonio Pierce for you know stating the obvious after that game was over. Well. Um, Kyle, we know Justin Herbert, he had himself a hell of a football game against the Saints. He had two touchdowns, no interception, 279 yards passing. Even after a rough start, he made easy work of the Saints defense. For a while, it was like three to two chargers, and the score was starting to look like the Yankees and Dodgers World Series game. I'm like, what yeah. the hell is going on? But then the Chargers started going to work on the Saints secondary, and Justin Herbert has played fantastic the last couple of weeks in terms of throwing the football downfield. And now he's starting to get into the end zone. And he found Lat McConkey twice yesterday. J.K. Dobbins also ran one in. And if I can add, they actually scored twice in the second half where they usually struggle. Mm -hmm. But as Justin Herbert continues to get healthier, we're starting to see those throws that wild people in. We're starting to see more designed quarterback runs from Justin Herbert to give defense is something else to prepare for. I still think they need to add another playmaking wide receiver. And we can get into that later, but what can't be denied is the relationship he's beginning to develop with Lat McConkey. What should worry other teams about Justin Herbert is he's starting to heat up the last few weeks. He's starting to really get comfortable in this offense under Greg Roman, and he's using the play action to find players downfield, which is finally opening up this offense. And after letting one slip away against the Cardinals, their record is now 4-3. and three. They're in the middle of the weakest spot of their schedule right now. But minus the Raiders, we know the competition is going to be within the division. But, Kyle, this is still a talented Cleveland team. So they have to go out there and find a way to slow down Jameis Winston because he had a good day yesterday as well. He threw over 300 yards, three touchdowns, and no picks against the Baltimore Ravens defense. So the Browns are trying to find their stride too. But if the Chargers want to be looked at as a potential playoff contender, they need to go into Cleveland and handle their business. Some of their strengths match up well with our strengths on offense. For example, uh, I I fully trust Rashawn Slater or Joe Walt to take on the challenge of Miles Garrett. That's going to be exciting. It's yeah. going to be exciting to see if they move Miles Garrett to Joe's side, and if Joe take, gets his toughest challenge of the year. Aside, you know, Crosby, it'd be interesting. What do you, what do you, what were, who would you you put them on the same tier there, Stacy Garrett and Crosby? Um. My top three best pass rushers, and me and a friend of mine was talking about it. I have um, Watt first, yep. then I have um, Miles Garrett, and have Crosby third. So there you go. Yeah, they're they're all they're right there. And it's I I personally I know it's not always fun because it's threatening uh, Justin Herbert's health, but yes. I love seeing our guys get challenged like that, especially yes. our studs. Um, yes. The Browns are another team that is reeling right now from some poor roster construction and decisions. Uh, mm -hmm. They had a chance to be, a, you know, a, a contender each and every year before yeah. they went and got Watson and yeah. now they're struggling through it. So they're another team that, you know, with their record, the way it is with the bill coming due on Watson, they could be selling some pieces. And David and Joku was one of the guys that I was really looking at. So I'm kind of hoping that, you know, post game, whatever happens, there's a handshake here or there. There's a little gym. <laughs> hey, hey, David, how you doing? And uh, maybe, maybe we can slide them over a day three pick for their guy. But other than that, and then so, uh, some other people were saying Greg Newsom, somebody to look at because he's in a contract year. The, and, the cornerback. Yeah, the cornerback. And hasn't been doing as well as he has in the past, but yeah. still a guy with a lot of raw talent and, and a history of success. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, Jameis Winston's a guy that, you know, he gets a lot of crap because he's a goofy dude. Uh, he trains in a funny way. He's very unique. He's very emotional. And and some guys within the league even give him some grief for how he talks to the team. And I know uh, 
there was a podcast recently that was just reaming him for licking his fingers after one. Oh movie. yeah. He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty but, weird dude. Yeah. It was like yeah. a 30 touchdown, 30 interception year or something. That's so. right. That's right. He was the only <laughs> one 30 and 30, you know, yeah. but he, that's but probably he, why they had a losing record. Or oh, they were 500 or something like that. Yeah. And I think that's when they went and got Tom Brady after that. Yes. I think, but he, like you said, he's got the talent. He's got yeah. a, an electric arm. Like he, that thing's yeah, a he rocket, do. man. He do. He do. So if, if you don't play disciplined and you, you focus too much on Chubb and you bite on play actions. He's going to be able to beat you deep. Uh, yeah. So let's, let's, I, I trust Minter. I trust Minter completely. Yeah. I trust our players. Molden is my gosh, a revolution revelation. Like, Oh, this, absolutely. Yes. yes. So I, um, I, I feel good about this one, Stacey. What, what do you yeah. think? I, I do. Um, I feel a lot better after Sunday's game. And the reason why is because these guys just needed to step up. We, you know, we look toward Joshua Palmer as being the number one as of right now. And um, expectations was falling short. You know, we had the issue with Rieger where he made a great catch, but then put the ball in harm's way and it got stripped away. And that's why you were seeing nine men fronts because the guys that were there just wasn't making plays. And to see these guys make plays, to see Lat McConkey break out and have the kind of game and show the game changing ability that he have, it'll get these safeties the back out of that box because mm -hmm. these guys has to show, Oh, you're going to leave me out here one-on-one -on -one because you, so now that you're making people pay going downfield and then Justin Herbert had to remind him, I'm still him. Mm -hmm. He had to remind them too, but he need those players to help him out. And the couple of those throws that you were talking about that he made to McConkey, McConkey wasn't open, mm -hmm. you know. But that shows you what McConkey can do with his skill set. He threw the ball where he expected, he gave his receiver an opportunity to go get it and make a play, and they did it. And that's what great quarterbacks do. That's what great receivers do. So after seeing that performance, I think it's going to change the way Cleveland game plan against them. And I'm still not going to rule out um, getting someone else in because of um, Hayden Hurst continues to get hurt. Mm -hmm. And when you depending on Will Disley, before McConkey had that big game, Will Disley was our leading receiver. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that and means we're in trouble he if he's he's wasn't in he trouble if, as well. Yes, he was. That <laughs> means we're in a lot of trouble if Will Disley, who was brought here to just be a blocker. And if he's the guy that's our leading receiver, we in trouble offensively. So it was great to see all these guys break out. And you still got Quentin Johnston coming back from injury too. So I think we okay. I think if we go out there and, and, and play good, sound, fundamental football and our defense continues to do what we're doing, if we at our best and Cleveland at, at their best, I think we should beat them. The only one that scares me on Cleveland is Njoku. Even mm -hmm. though the last couple of times we played, it was it was it was shootouts, yeah. and we came out on top. And Joku was unstoppable those couple of games, though. I, I wouldn't turn down adding somebody, Stacy, but I'm still in that boat where I want to see with Quinton back, with Darius Davis back when he gets back, and hopefully Jark that we can succeed with this group with a little more creativity in the play design. I know that's kind of one of those things that we don't have control over and it's not what Greg Roman is known for with his receivers, but uh, I, it, it is a little alarming that we've been complaining that we haven't get, gotten separation from our receivers. And even though we did succeed last, uh, this week, we still didn't get that, right? Like, like we said, Lad McConkey was making a lot of contested catches. There were some that were schemed open, which was great. Josh Palmer had a couple. Um, but, but man, we've got guys with speed, a couple more crossing routes, which we, which we were hitting Johnston on, on before he was hurt. So hopefully that is something that comes back into the scheme. I'd love to see Darius get involved again. Um, if we do make a trade and I think you, you were alluding to it, Stacy, I would love to find a tight end that can be here for four or five years. Like somebody, I don't just want somebody on a one year prove it with a tight end or just in a contract year that we pick up and it's like, well, we'll, tr we'll, we'll try, we'll try for a run here and then we'll let him walk in free agency. No, I, I want to target a guy that's young enough that we can extend, 
let pair him with Herbert for multiple years because yeah. we've been missing that since Hunter Henry. And it that's where we really need an impact player. Like you said, we cannot rely on Will Disley to be our leading tight end <laughs> receiver, like a receiving option at tight end and our leading blocker. He's a blocker and yeah. he has shown that he's got that receiving upside or plus side as a blocking tight end. We can go to him in a pinch, but we still need a go-to guy there. And we do, we do. That's, we, that's where, where we've got to be, do a little shopping right now. Listen, remember um, in the springtime, you know, I had to take some time away and, uh, and you guys were still doing the podcast. And one of the things I was wishing I was wrong, but remember when the conversation was going on, when Ayuk wasn't signed, now I, jokingly said we need to get somebody like Ayuk and realistically I know we weren't going to get Ayuk because it was a, a money issue the point I was making was I was afraid that without having I mean Keon Allen and Mike Williams were big time ballers on this team mm -hmm. and um and I was worried about we're facing these teams when we're third and eight and we're third and 12 you knew when everybody in the stadium knew he's going to go to Keenan mm -hmm. and you knew it and you planned against it, and you doubled him, and you still couldn't prevent him from getting open and getting that first down. And I felt like we didn't have that on this roster, and that would hurt. And here we are in week eight, still begging for a receiver. So yeah. I was hoping I would have been wrong, but that's why I was glad to see these guys step up. But I think this offense could be explosive. Look at Buffalo. Mm -hmm. They went two games in a row and was hard. They couldn't get in the end zone. what they do? They wouldn't get Amari Cooper. Mm -hmm. to help them out. The Jets, even though they're still struggling, they're not going anywhere really fast, but they went out and tried by bringing in Devontae Adams. I'm saying, go get someone to help Justin Herbert because we're going to, I mean, DJ Chark is week eight, week nine, and he hasn't, we haven't seen him yet. Yeah, And these are yeah. guys that we're depending on if we really want to get into the playoffs. We're depending on guys that's in urgent care all the time. And Stacy, do you know what the bigger story with Amari Cooper is for me? What's that? Um, how much better has Keon Coleman looked? Yeah. Their rookie wide receiver. Yes, yes. Picked it at the top of the second round. Hadn't taken off all season. Was was kind of like didn't really put up a good stat line all season, as far as I can remember. I don't think he had a really breakout, a big breakout game. No. Finally goes for over a hundred yards. Yeah. Win. He's got another threat across from him. And as a rookie, it's not on his plate to be the number one guy. Immediately right. goes for 125. And then yes. this week almost breaks 100 again and gets a yes. touchdown. So that's the power of what you're talking about, bringing yes. in a vet that can win yes. and will command that number one coverage. It is. It says nothing negative about Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman's no. a rookie. He has a lot of room to grow, and he's already showing he's got a great skill set. But yeah. it's given that man time to develop, less pressure, and right. he's thriving because of it. So, right. you know, you like you're saying, you put you put um, Lad McConkey in that kind of situation, yes. and I think we mentioned this last week. McConkey does a lot of his work in the slot. If you have a true outside threat that completely changes how a team can scheme around you. But if Absolutely. your number one threat is in the slot and his name isn't Keenan Allen, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a lot easier to scheme shutting him down with, you know, some double yeah. teams or whatnot. You have a lot more players you can incorporate yes. the kind of cloud around him. Even so. if you had got D hop, you know, now mm -hmm. watch what Xavier worthy, uh, um, the rookie does with the Kansas City Chiefs by having D Hop there. No, D Hop not going to stretch the field. He's never really been a burner like that. But when you need to count on someone, where like, you're on the road and it's third and twelve, and everybody, you know, can barely hear the calls that's going mm -hmm. out, and the crowd is going crazy, and you, it's a, it's important. It's in the fourth quarter. You need this first down. That's what D Hop is there. That's what Keenan was there for. Absolutely. You know. So I'm saying to those other organizations recognize Josh needs some help. Aaron Rodgers needs some help. Pat Mahomes needs some help. We're saying give that to Justin. Mm -hmm. Give that to him because I see Lat McConkey being Wes Welker mm -hmm. for, for Justin Herbert. I see him being Julia Edelman, but at a higher skill level, though. Yeah. He's absolutely. that dude. I, I really do think if we really going to be who we want to be and go to that next level, because let's 
I mean, I love what they're doing right now, but it's, it is not 2012. As much as you want to ground and pound and run the ball, at some point you have to put some points on the board. Yeah. We can't just depend on that. And and you seen it's it's starting to open up now because those guys are coming out that box because, hey, you know, Joshua Palmer making plays over here, Reader making plays down here, McConkie's running posts and running slants across the middle, catch one on the sideline, break back free in the middle of, of the field. Mm-hmm. Nobody can catch him. He looting ta- you can see it, and that's going to make them get out the box. So I'm saying give them guys some help, man. I love Lat McConkie, but don't just be content with just that. Yeah, we want we want to win. We want our team to be very competitive, and we want when we go into if you get in those playoffs and you play a team that could put some points on the board. Sometimes your defense just don't. They can be lights out most of the year, but you have one or two of those games where it's just not going to be there. And you're going to need to have an offense that's going to be able to bail you out. That'll do it for this episode, and thank you for joining us here at Charters Talk 4630. Please don't forget to log on to stormcloud.blog if you're looking for more Charters content. We'll be back later in the week, maybe Friday, to discuss the Chargers traveling to the dog pound in Cleveland, Ohio, to face the Browns, an important game that the Chargers must have. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that now before you leave this podcast. And as always, be good, be safe, be well, be kind to each other, enjoy the rest of your week, and bolt up. Man, I love chopping it up with my boy Kyle talking football i love football so much and uh so does he and whenever we get together and start talking football man there's times where me and kyle could go on for like an hour and a half just talking but we try to keep this podcast at least to a minimum of 30 35 minutes we know you don't want to sit there and be watching an hour and a half podcast but we had so many good things Um, just to discuss, we wanted you to still hear the second half of our conversation too, because we were making some good points, but I'm going to end this part one and we're going to add, uh, part two on to split it up so that if you don't have time, you could check part one out and when you can get some more time and you can get around to it, you can go ahead and listen to part two.